All right, down here at Comic-Con with Neil deGrasse Tyson. And we've been talking with actors and action stars and blockbusters. Not too many astrophysicists come our yeah, way. I don't know how many are here. There's got to be a few. There's <laughs> got to be. There's at least one. <laughs> what brings you to Comic-Con? Well, so, I, you know, Comic-Con is like a, it's a beautiful circus. And so, so you need, like, the energy level to do it and accommodate it. So for me, my radio show, Star Talk, uh, opens its, starts its third season this coming fall. And so there's that. That's why we're here, National Geographic. But we're thinking of releasing a game, a video game, that uh, uh, the provisional name for it is Space Odyssey. Is that clever? Yeah, Space yeah, very, Odyssey? Very, well <laughs> yeah, very original. Uh, no, just there are enough video games that are shoot 'em up and this sort of thing. I was trying to explore, I, I'm teaming up with the video game producers. Can we think about a journey you might take where you control the formation of solar systems, of planets, of comets? You, you control the formation of life, civilization. You could maybe tweak the force of gravity and see what effect that will have. And this becomes sort of an exploration into the laws of physics and how they shape the universe in which we live. So I was on a panel talking about the creation of universes. And there are different kinds of, there's a Game of Thrones as a kind of universe. Um, there's, there's uh, what's the, J.R.R. Tolkien. Yep, Lord, um, of Lord of the Rings, that's a kind of universe. Um, Star Wars is a universe. So if you're creating universes, you want a good storyteller in there. But in the case, when an astrophysicist says, I want to create a universe, maybe I really think I want to create an actual universe. <laughs> Your career I find so fascinating because you kind of have a foot in two different worlds, the science world, but also kind of the entertainment world. Yeah, it's not on purpose. Well. No, it was like, I'm, I'm minding my own business at home, and I get a phone call. Oh, will you voice over this character who is a science-based thing in this movie? Or will you, and, and I'm flattered to be asked, but I'm also intrigued that we live in a time where artists are reaching out of their zone to scientists and technologists because they want to include that in what they create. It could be storytelling, it could be cinemagraphic, uh, uh, it could be uh, even today or yesterday, uh, what is it, uh, Ice Age 5 <laughs> opened up. Yes, there's been five of them. <laughs> okay. I know. Let me wake you up to that. Yeah, you, you obviously have kids. There's been five. The there's been five yeah. of them, and uh, almost as many as, uh, uh, as Fast and Furious, right? So I was asked by the Ice Age people, will I play a character that helps one of their characters save the Earth from a collision asteroid, but a, a collision with an asteroid? And so, yes, I'm going to come for those because... If they're not reaching to scientists, then they're just making stuff up. And yes, there's a long time honored tradition of making stuff up. But if you want to make some of it real, I am honored and I feel it as a sense of duty and a privilege to serve the interest of the artist. You know, it's interesting you say that because you know, as, as, a, as a news reporter here in town, I interview a lot of doctors and scientists when we do stories. You have a remarkable ability to speak a common language that people easily understand, which is why I assume you're a guest on so many programs. When you talk about a sense of duty to the artist, as a scientist, do you feel a responsibility because of your ability to communicate, to almost be a standard bearer for, for scientists in that way? Yeah, yeah, and I feel it sometimes. It's a heavy bear, it's a heavy weight, in the sense that everybody comes to me, no matter the science topic. And I, I want to say, look, I have thoughts on all these things, but formally I'm an astrophysicist. So if you want to talk science, let's keep it in the universe. Contain it within the universe. The, the actual universe, uh, the, not the, these ones you're making up. The, the actual universe. So, but what I do, which I stumbled on really, is uh, I study and think about the architecture of pop culture. And I say, well, we're all familiar with, we are fluent in pop culture. That's the definition of pop culture. So if I attach science to that architecture, I don't have to prep you for it. You'll receive it immediately. When I'm watching the Super Bowl, I tweet physics things about the Super Bowl, about momentum transfer 
of players when they hit one another. About if the if the football gridiron is a timeline of the universe, all 14 billion years, then human history from cavemen to the present is the thickness of a blade of grass in the end zone. So I get to use the end zone. I don't have to say, well, here's what an end zone is, or here's what the gridiron, I don't have to explain any of that. I don't have to tell you what a blade of grass is. I don't have to tell you who cavemen are. But I can tell you and give you a sense and appreciation of the cosmic perspective that that information brings. That's what Star Talk is. That's what this game is. We're going to try to connect it in in ways that you'll care about it. That's really all it is. And that it, it, it confirmed for me that there's an untapped appetite, maybe even a, a geek underbelly of us all. <laughs> where it, Some of us are more underbelly than others. <laughs> And so, a soft, deep yeah, underbelly, where maybe nothing else you do in life celebrates what could be this interest that you have that maybe you didn't even know you had. Or maybe it was an ember that had gone cold, and we just fanned the flame to make it rise up again. So, by the way, it's not just what I do. Look at the success of the TV series The Big Bang Theory. If you Google Big Bang Theory, the TV show comes up first, and the creation of the universe comes up second. So... And I don't know whether to cheer that or be upset by that, but it's an interesting thing. I'm going to allow you to be upset by it because it's a show on another network. <laughs> okay. That'll be the reason. Uh, for, for all the, the, the science geeks. Not on ABC. Okay. Go. For all the science geeks coming to, to San Diego, it's great having a scientist geek here, and we appreciate you taking a few minutes to share with Excellent. us. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, right here joining us on ABC 10 News.